ladies and gentlemen. Me hand you bye bye. I was requested to say something about or to give a delivery of the university, what as a university we are doing to help in the development of the of the municipality. I have had some engagement with the municipal chief executive and so he requested me to do this. So kindly, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you permit me, I will run to some slides. So the university, we, this is our second year. We began work in 2020 in September and December. And so this is our iconic building. I hear during the break some of us who want to go around, so we'll take you around. Uh, this is a, a lecture hall. We call it the faculty block, which houses or seats 1,545 students. If all the rooms are taken up, 1,545 students, including some offices. Our vision is to be a center of excellence in knowledge gathering and dissemination in the area of environment and sustainable development for public good. And so everything we are doing by way of mission will move us there. The core values of the university is acronym HOPE, H-O-P-E. The H stands for honesty, O stands for opportunities, P, perseverance, E, enterprise. It is our vision to create students who are honest and who are able to take advantage of opportunities as well as create opportunities. We want them to know that life doesn't come easy and so if you fall, you rise and you continue. And so we have the, the old kindergarten rhyme. It's a lesson you should meet, you will meet, try again. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Then your courage will appear, try again, try again, try again. That's what we want to uh, inculcate in our students. And then also to teach them to be employable, to be able to employ themselves and employ their other colleagues and so have the entrepreneurial uh, aspect. These are the key officers. Our chairman of council is Professor Jonathan N. Ayete. The rest of us have been introduced earlier on. We have two schools that are in operation. Uh, that's the first two, School of Natural and Environmental Sciences and the School of Sustainable Development. We are beginning our third school as a department called the School of Built environment. Over here in the third school, we have design programs for architecture and sustainable technology. We have designed course for BSc construction management and architecture and then urban design, BSc urban design and planning. Mr. Chairman, we have been told that if we're able to get this BSc urban design and planning done, it will be the first in the country. And so we are striving to have that done. In the full operation, the university is designed to have three centers, to have three research centers, the Center for Agro-Entrepreneurship, the Center for Agricultural Biotechnology, and the Center for Sustainable Development. Two schools are currently in operation, and these are some of the programs that they are running. The School of Natural and Environmental Sciences, we call it SNES, has a Department of Environment and Public Health, which offers programming BSc Environment and Public Health, BSc Environmental Management, and then BSc Nature Conservation Management. Our Department of Geography and Earth Sciences has a BSc Geography and Earth Sciences and a BSc in Geosciences. The other ones follow. Mr. Chairman, this program for this department is very unique because it presents a dual degree, a dual specialization. So you, are, you graduate with a BSc in biology and then in mathematical science, instead of BSc in biology alone or BSc in mathematical science. For the School of Sustainable Development, we have the BSc Energy Sustainability, Energy Resource Economics, environmental economics and policy and sustainable development. And then for the Department of Water Resource and Sustainable Development, 
We have BSC Aquaculture Management, BSC Water Resources Development, and then the WASH program, Water Sanitation and Hygiene. This is the inside of the iconic building we, we showed. And then this is inside of the lecture theater, and then our lab. Our lab has one of the best equipment in the country. We called an expert to come and help us to work on it, and he told us that the things that are here can do exploit. We are working once, one day at a time to roll it all up. So, um, this is our temporal administration for the school. This is supposed to be an administration for one of the faculties. If you look on your right, you see an uncompleted building there. That is supposed to be the uh, main administration for the university. This is the student hostel facility, which takes 74 students. In our second year, we have 265 students. But this takes 74 students. So, Mr. Chairman, you can imagine where the others are. It's state of the art, top is the washroom, and then below it is the below it is one of the a picture of one of the rooms. We have a space for disability friendly room and then the washroom. Down here we have what we call the water treatment and distribution station. Um, we are now connected to Ghana Water Company. Two years back we were not connected to water company. So what we did was to get our own water. So the facility is just behind here. We can go and then have a look at, at that. Where it recycles, it brings together all rain, rain water from all the buildings are channeled down here. And then it is recycled for us to get. If you go back to the water closet, come back to be uh, treated and recycled and back into the water closet. We have three debt fund projects on campus and I would like to say that we are happy to have a review prices to get the programs done. On the right is what is supposed to have been a lecture hall and a computer block. On here is what I said is supposed to be the auditorium, sorry, supposed to be the administration and back here is the auditorium. The contractors have visited us and they have given us six months to finish. And so we hope that by 2023, Yellow State Homecoming Summit, we will not do it here, we will do it in the new auditorium. <laughs> the phase two of the project of this university is currently running. And so the phase two is supposed to give us another one, a bigger, of our faculty block, which will include library and offices, another laboratory block, a recreational complex. If you came by that, uh, by the second gate, you will see a place that has been hoarded. It's supposed to be our recreational uh, complex, which will have a football field, basketball courts, volleyball courts, uh, lawn tennis courts, and all others. And then staff accommodation, and uh, two kilometer inner university road to be asphalted. In our two years, we have visited um, organizations to share our vision with them. That's why we are so happy that Mr. Kolache is here. Asemo, because we came to GNPC, and GNPC gave us a promise. So we are happy you are here. We will discuss that one later. Yes, so, so we went around discussing how best they can assist us in what they what we will do. Uh, we have signed MOUs or MOAs with local and foreign institutions to undertake common activities like research, data sharing, and all that. And we've also collaborated with institutions to undertake common projects and programs here on this campus. In our relations with the community, we find ourselves as a university set for the community. And so what we did first is to establish the community engagement projects and innovations unit under the office of the vice chancellor. And um, Mr. Minta is, is the head of the unit. And 
When I got here with him, he was the first to be noticed. But, hey, Daniel, 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 Daniel. So it means that he is working. So what this unit is supposed to do is to liaise between the university and the community and bring the university to the community and the community to the university. And together, I think we have done a couple of things. As a vice chancellor, together with the team, we have visited all the senior high school and technical schools and the College of Education in Hilo and Manya municipalities, as well as four municipalities on the ridge, to tell them about the university, to tell them what we have, and to encourage them to take opportunity of the university, because the university is here for them. We've also collaborated with a young lady from the United States of America to organize a STEM boot camp, that is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, boot camp for selected SHS students uh, from this municipality. And we've involved selected students in tree planting exercises and activities of World Environment Day as well as World Earth Day. We established the UESD Community Development Challenge this challenge is supposed to inculcate in the youth or to bring in the youth the discussion of how we run our environment. We began this year and we used pupils from class 4 to 6 to tell us their views about the environment, what is happening in the environment, that they think it is no good and how they think it can be run. Mr. Chairman, it will interest you to note the things these young people told us. We said, if you can write, write an essay. If you can't write, do an artifact. If you can't do it, draw. And in this room, on the day, it was wonderful. To 10 districts in the eastern region, extended it to North Tong, because last year, when, this year when we did it for the primary schools, I had an SHS a headmaster called me from Akusi to say that he has said we are doing something and we are not included in school. Now we are moving to JHS. We are looking, working with 50 um, junior high schools and the district will bring it down to 30 and we will call the 30, have the team work on them and the 30 will come and display what they are doing here. Now Daniel tells me that this year we can't do it inside. We have to do it outside. And we're going to do it outside. From there, we're going to take it to the uh, SHS, all in a bit to include our young people in the environment and what they think about it. We've also collaborated with ISE to organize workshops on climate change. Um, there's a research project by one of our faculty in distributing refuse bins to SHS students which will help in waste segregation. And then also we visited selected churches, mosques and radio stations to educate the public and issues that, on issues that we think are uh, appropriate. We began community-based experiential learning program this year. This is part of the study of our students, that every student that goes through education in this university will go through this program where they stay in the communities. So um, they went to Akole, Ogome, um, the Onimako. Um, they went to 16 communities around us. And then some also went to Esuchari to stay there for five weeks to profile the communities when they come they will submit their report and then we will see how we will move forward. And this is what is going to, is going to go. That right from training, they should be embedded in the community so that when they go, nothing becomes new to them. Mr. Chairman, I put this slide here that as areas for possible support. As we are coming home, what can we do to help this institution? And so areas for possible support, 
We are calling on the public, captains of industry, individuals, if they will, to support us with some of these things. Computers, printers, photocopiers, institutions and organizations for intention. When this, now we are getting to the third year, so in the third year, a level 300 students are going to go into industry. The first one, they went into the community. The second one, they're going to go into industry. And so, avenues, places for internships for these students. Our first batch is 76 students. And then, means of transportation, buses and pickups, security posts, and then accommodation for staff. We will be glad, Mr. Chairman, to welcome individuals who want to put up um, accommodation facilities for both our students and staff on a PPP arrangement or that's right, on PPP or PUC. And so in sponsorship for COBEL, we have to pay. And let, let me mention, Mr. Chairman, the magnanimity of some of the communities who took our students, gave them free accommodation for the five feet. I hear one assemblyman was pounding to food for them every Sunday. You know, and so when the students were coming, they had a lot of stories to tell us about that, about that man. And we also want to look at scholarship for brilliant but needy students. Currently, I'm happy to announce that the Oakley Permen, if I pronounce this right, yes. Nene Sastraku is sponsoring our first student who was found sitting on one of the lawns. A teacher, found, a lecturer found him and said, what do you want? He said, please, I want to come to school. What's your result? He showed the result, and these are very good results. How do we do this? So for his first fees, the lecturers contributed and paid and called the mother to say that we are paying his school fees. You provide his feeding. So our lecturers paid for the first that gentleman, and then Daniel connected him to uh, Nene. And you know, before the academic year starts, his school fees is paid, his laptop is given, and all that. And so we will kindly implore you if you can sponsor one student for us. Our school fees is 3,280. So if you can help to sponsor one student or two students, who will, be, who will be happy. And so we also are looking for the establishment of an endowment fund for the university, and then the establishment of chairs for respective disciplines. Here we are doing aquaculture, environment. Our, our great programs are coming next year, and so we can establish chairs for that, and then also accommodation for students. This is how you can contact us. Please visit our website, the address is there. You can send email to the Vice Chancellor of the Registrar and follow our social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then YouTube. It is our commitment that individuals who take our education will come out as graduates of hope. They will be honest, they will be able to identify and take advantage of opportunities they will persevere in life to make it, and they will be entrepreneurial enough. Persons who have hope in themselves, who exude hope, and are poised to give hope to the world by their knowledge and their ethics. Thank you very much.